the tour talk for the week of March 29th through April 5th. Only one event this week. We had a Major League Fishing Big 5 Toyota Series Central Division event at Dale Hollow in Tennessee. Congratulations to Adam Wagner, who weighed in the only three, he was the only angler to weigh in three five fish limits uh, in, in the entire tournament, but he weighs 23.15 on day one, the largest bag of the tournament, 13.02 on day two, and 16.10 on day three for a total weight of 53 pounds, 11 ounces. Uh, he actually won this event going away. He won it by uh, just under 11 pounds. Finishing in second is Brandon Klein with a three-day total of 42 pounds, 15 ounces. Brian Thrift is a familiar name from the Bass Pro Tour fishing this Toyota Series event. He finishes third with 42 pounds, 9 ounces. Jimmy Washam, who won the first Central Division event, finishes fourth with 41 pounds, 1 ounce. And Robert Regan finishes fifth with 37 pounds, 12 ounces. Now, there was a second event that was scheduled for this week. It was a BASS Open event. That had to be canceled. It was on Smith Lake. That was canceled due to high water, a lot of flooding in that part of the country. And when you can't find the launch, ramp, or launch ramps or when the launch ramps are underwater, pretty hard to put boats out there. So that event has been canceled. It's going to be, or I should, sorry, postponed. It will be, uh, they, will, they will do it again in, uh, in, in October. And we will see how that turns out at that point. Are you looking for a global action camera that won't break your bank? Check out this clip. hundred and seventy degree standard wide angle lens plug-in option for all-day power remote sync with your smartphone waterproof to 30 feet patented interchangeable lens system all at a price that won't break your bank Tacticam fisheye because that fish of a lifetime happens once in a lifetime well folks this week on tour talk we are very fortunate to have uh, a few minutes to spend with major league fishing pro Jimmy Washam. Our guest is fishing his second season on the Major League Fishing Big Five Pro Circuit, where he currently sits in 46th place. He's also fishing the Major League Fishing Toyota Series Central Division, where he has a first place at Gunnersville and a fourth place at Dale Hollow. He sits at the top of that division. He also just moved into second place in the Bass Tour Anglers Angler of the Year race which is a real feather in your cap there, Jimmy. I don't even know if you're familiar with that or not. But uh, anyway, Jimmy, Washam, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thank you so much for having me. So in case you didn't know, you're, you're, you're number two in the country in the Bass Tour Anglers podcast, Angler of the Year uh, race. And uh, what we've done is we put together a series uh, where we, we follow all the events that that the, that the pros from the top tours fish. So the, so the Bass Pro Tour and the BASS Elite Series, wherever these guys fish, we follow, the, we follow all the events. So these guys fish opens, they fish Toyota Series events. There's some stuff on the West Coast that they fish and that 63 events total. And uh, you're sitting number two in all, in all of that. So that's, that's pretty impressive. And, and I have looked into uh, what you're doing with the angler of the year race and the, the system that you designed. And, and uh, I think it's neat. I don't think that I'm the, the second angler in the country by any means, but um, I've, I've had a good start to the year. So I'm, uh, I'm very appreciative of that. Well, you, you look, you know what, what we, we are bass fishing fans and we want to see the best bass fishermen fish and fish all the time. And what you are doing is you are fishing all the time. You fish a lot of events. Uh, and, and, you know, that's what we try to reward is the guys that are out there hustling. Now, I mean, I, not to take anything away from anybody that, uh, that uh, 
you know, Fish has won tour, but you know, the idea is to crown an overall champion because uh, there are a lot of tours and, you know, we got to find a way to have, have a champion anyway. um, We'll talk a little bit more about that later on, but that's, that's uh, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, You know, Jimmy, uh, you've, you've been doing this for a little bit now, but uh, talk about how you've got to where you are. It seems like you started uh, fishing the, uh, the smaller events and you've kind of worked your way up. Just talk about your, your career in, in a couple of minutes here. Yeah, you know, I, I started out from literally from the bottom with a, a little aluminum tracker boat fishing club tournaments and, um, you know, just working, working at Bass Pro Shops, uh, not making much money and just barely getting by fishing how I could. I, I, I got a new job, got into law enforcement and uh, started making a little bit more money and, and started building my way up to to being able to afford a, a a bigger boat, not a newer boat, but a bigger boat. And so I, I started fishing the BFLs in 2015. I fished as a co-angler in 2016. I moved up to a boater and the way kind of the standard that I had set for myself and the progression of fishing was that every time I found success, I would move up to the next level. If I didn't find success, then it was not meant for me to, to elevate myself from that point. So the second BFL I fished as a boater, by the grace of God, I won it. And that put some money in my pocket, helped me pay off the 20 year old Ranger that I had just recently bought, moved up to the Costa series. Uh, it took me three years to work out the bugs there and, and to learn and become a better angler. I had uh, boat problems with older boat. I ended up the third year of the coast is investing in a, a newer Ranger. Um, that helped me a lot. It gave, gave me a lot of confidence. That third year, I qualified for the pro circuit by finishing third in the central division. And um, that was in 2019. And and last year, I made the move up to the pro circuit. Okay. Yeah. That, that you know, and, and that's, I believe that's the way this this whole system is meant to be to be used. I mean, that's Absolutely. that's how it is designed. Of course, there's 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 the college ranks, and and those college ranks kind of filter into the BFLs, and then and then on from there. Um, so so this is your second year then on on the Big Five Pro Tour, then correct? Yes, sir. Okay, um, that's good stuff. Uh, you're off to a blistering start on the Toyota Series Central Division, a win and a fourth. Um, um, what, what, what was your motivation for doing that? Other than the fact that you can win some pretty good money doing that, but what, what was your motivation for doing that? Just to keep yourself going or. Yeah. You know, the reason that I fish is because I love it. And that's, you know, uh, that, that's something that God instilled in me. I love being in outdoors. I love to hunt and I love to fish. I've, I've done that since I was a kid, but the reason that I tournament fish I have a competitive nature about myself. I played sports growing up, but, but the main reason that I tournament fish is to make money. I mean, that's, that's uh, the reason that anybody enters a tournament for the most part uh, when you really get down to it is that's, you know, you enter it to make some money. You want to compete and you want to win money. So that's when I saw the Toyota series, uh, the schedule that we had this year, and most importantly, the championship being at Pickwick, I decided that that was something that was a good opportunity for me to, um, help supplement my earnings along with the pro circuit schedule by by jumping in and fishing and up to this point it uh you know it's worked out far beyond what i ever would have imagined as far as as being a a, a lucrative um endeavor for me yeah you're gonna have to talk to your accountant uh because you, you've done pretty well the first part of this year so far <laughs> yes sir i i joked with uh bill taylor and I told him, I said, I just need to be a professional Toyota series angler because <laughs> I'm uh, having a better year there than I am on the pro circuit. But it's a long year and this is really a roller coaster of a game. So uh, I'm just trying to hold on tight and keep the momentum going. You know, you, let's talk about that Toyota series because because the Toyota series and all the BASS opens. These are the toughest events in the country. I mean, in the elite series, you have a small field. In in well the the the, the pro tour the pro circuit's got a big field too but but these are these are full of hungry sometimes local anglers and that, that are tough to beat on their own waters right absolutely I've always said that the 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 Toyota and the and the Bass Open 
uh, events are tougher because you you have people. Uh, if you want to use the word jackpot, I mean, you have local mm-hmm. guys that are great, not just local, but regional guys. I mean, you look at, at Adam Wagner that just won the, yes. the event at Dale Hollow. He's, he's a prime example. You have so many guys that could probably fish professionally and excel at that level if they wanted to, but they've chosen, you know, they've got a secure profession or that's, you know, for other reasons, they don't want to go on the road and fish all over the country. So they fish regionally and a guy like, like me, for example, that has never seen Dale Hollow Lake or, you know, wherever the next event is, then, you know, I'm competing against the best guys on their, on their home bodies of water. So I've always said that the, the Toyota and the Bass Open level is, is every bit as hard, if not harder than, than, uh, you know, the levels above it to compete in. Let's talk a little bit about Dale Hollow because that, that was a, that was a tough, tough event. It sure was. You know, I'd, in practice, I was so spun. You know, I I kept telling myself it has to get better, or, or these poor bass in this lake are going to starve because they are not eating. <laughs> but uh, just the 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 sheer volume of water that that was introduced into the fishery right before we got there. I mean, I don't care where you go. I I, I fish the Tennessee River a lot, and I've caught fish on a fast rise. You know, sometimes it'll it'll kind of turn them on, but when the lake rises that fast and you get that much fresh muddy water in the lake, it's just going to upset the fish. I mean, it, 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 the, the, the best analogy I like to use is their house got turned upside down. Yeah. So I knew it would take a couple of days for the fish to recover from that. And thank God that event wasn't two days earlier because I think half the field would have zeroed. I mean, practice was just terrible. Um, and I, I just put my head down and said, these fish at some point in time have to get on cover in this mud and, uh, you know, get on hard targets and, and eat, eat a spinner bait, eat a jig. And, uh, fortunately that's what ended up happening. It just, uh, you know, I think it, I dialed into that just a little bit late on day one, but I was like, I told somebody at, at the event, I was glad I figured it out on day one and not, uh, after day two in the truck on the way home. Yeah, uh, Adam Wagner was the only guy to catch a limit all three days. Yeah, now that's that's saying something. Yeah, Del Hollow is a healthy fishery. Yes, I mean, there is. there is a a truckload of of three and four pound largemouth in that lake, and not to mention all the smallmouth. That's the, the probably the healthiest smallmouth fishery I've ever seen. But a lot of fish in that lake, and for that many, two hundred and ten, I think anglers that uh, you know, the best around that you could put on a body of water and for one guy to catch a three day limit, that's, that's a testament to how tough the fishing was. Now, now you mentioned never having fished that lake before. Tell us a little bit about how you prepare for something like that, because that's a, that's a, a pretty daunting task. You know, it is, but really looking back on it, the, the conditions may have helped me because if you're a local guy that fishes Dale Hollow every weekend, how often do you fish it after it just rose seven feet True. and it's and it's puking mud? So it it almost, in my opinion, even the playing field down to where I could just go and visually look at at things and and uh, you know and and fish for fish like I have on the Mississippi River and and Oxbow's the way I grew up fishing, uh, you know, in in that muddy water. So I think it kind of turned it around where spots didn't matter as much as just bare knuckles going at it, you know, fishing in the woods and, and taking advantage of every bite you got. So, and you ended up catching those fish uh, mainly on spinner baits. Is that what I understood? Spinner bait, a jig and a square bill. I mean, it was, okay. it was 101 flooded cover fishing. Yeah. Uh, the, the spinner bait, I, I, I like it because you can, you know, I, Cast accurately, you can fish it through cover and it vibrates, you know, puts off the vibration. The What what really amazed me is I, I caught some of my better fish, especially on day two, and water that, I'm not kidding you, you could not see a bait a half an inch into it. It was, it was the muddiest water I've ever caught fish in, and I caught fish on a black and blue jig three or four feet deep. Wow. And you know, normally in water that color with the, the reduced light penetration, those fish won't be that deep, but... And the best thing I could figure there is Dale Hollow is generally a, a fairly clear fishery and you had all this mud introduced into the, the water column. And my best 
guess at that is that that mud was closer to the surface or it was muddier at the surface and it was starting to clean itself a little bit deeper, you know, in that three or four foot range. And that that's the only th reason I could figure that I would catch fish that deep along with the lake falling. So I think it had the fish, uh, you know, a little closer to security. Well, I got to tell you, I, I'm a, I'm a Southern California angler and water that muddy. That, that's an extreme discomfort zone for me. I mean, I mean, woof, we try to avoid that. Like, like, like the plague most of the time, most of the time we can, cause our lakes are so clear, but, uh, that's a huge adjustment. And, you know, most of the top 10 guys caught their fish down in the lake where you could get down to the, you know, what you'd consider good fishable water. But for some reason, it, it really played in my advantage, me being able to figure out how to catch them in that, in that bad mud because there was not a lot of pressure up there. I mean, those fish were almost untouched compared to the fish down the lake. So, uh, I, doing doing research for the uh for this this interview um i stumbled across your in your instagram um a post about profound outdoors tell us about profound outdoors uh, this is, is, is this a new company or it's timmy horton's company right yes sir that's right and and they're they're not uh new by any means they've you know got an established history of, of building good baits it's it's a company that i've used their stuff for a while uh it's a kind of a you know, originated with, with Timmy Horton on the Tennessee river. And, um, the, that shaker Z that I won Gunnersville on it's, that's been a bait that I've caught fish on for a long time. And, um, I had no affiliation with profound outdoors whatsoever when I won Gunnersville, but, and, you know, I had the opportunity to, to tell the public what I was catching them on, or I, I could, could say, you know, oh, I just caught, caught them on a lipless bait, uh, because it didn't benefit me any, but, um, Timmy has always been a, a real down to earth guy. And, yeah. and, uh, I really like that line of baits. And I said, well, I don't expect anything out of this, not trying to get anything out of this, but, um, I'm going to, you know, let, let everybody know how well these baits catch fish so everybody can benefit from it. And what, uh, ended up developing from that, um, was a, a partnership with them that, that, yeah, it's, it's the first partnership that I've had, um, it's, it's the first partnership I've had with a hard bait company, uh, with Azuma. Um, and you know, I mean, they've got clone Azuma and swampers. So they've, they've got a, everything covered as far as what you need in your boat to catch fish. But, uh, it's one of those that genuinely it's stuff I used before the partnership came. It's not like, you know, I had a, an opportunity and took it because I thought I could get something out of it and, and didn't truly believe in it. So that's why I'm so excited about that partnership. Well, it's, it, I think it's exciting when, when uh, companies recognize new talent and they, and they, uh, you know, and they make it, they make it, uh, I, I mean, you're the one that's making it possible, but, 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 but when they come along to help, I think that's uh, that's a good thing. And I think that's one of the things I, I like about the sport so much is that, uh, is that there is that relationship between angler and, and companies. And yeah, I know that, that there are some guys that uh, are, are more, uh, I guess you'd say probably they always talk about sponsor stuff, even when they're catching them on something else. But, but I think I, I, you can tell when a guy's genuine and you, you certainly give off that vibe. So that's, that's good. I'm glad to hear that that's working out for you. Um, are you fishing? Are you fishing full time these days? You, you mentioned something about having a, a job in law enforcement. Is that something that you're doing also? Yes, sir. I, what I tell everybody, semi jokingly, but it's it's really not a joke. Is I have two full time jobs. I'm yep. a, a full time sheriff's deputy in West Tennessee, oh, and, cool. uh, and and fishing. You know, at the professional level, is a hundred percent a full time job. It's that really kind of slapped me in the face last year, seeing how the business side of things work because. I, you know, I'm just like any other um, naive kid getting into the sport as you think, you know, you think of all the good stuff and the, you know, catching fish, making money, winning trophies and going to all these cool lakes and everything's good. But there's really a business side of it, too, that takes a lot of your time. So um, I'm having to really stay on top of it to shuffle both of those and and continue to to uh, be successful and and efficient at both of them. But I. Uh, I really enjoy my job as a sheriff's deputy. I've come a long way. I work for a great agency that really takes care of me. So um, 
So at this point in time, I couldn't be any happier with with having the security of that job, uh, along with the success that I'm that I'm having right now in the fishing side of, of it. Absolutely, yeah, that, that's 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 uh, it's really neat to hear, and and you know it's good to have uh, it's good to have uh, it's good to have that kind of stability as well. So um, now, is the is the plan to keep going forward to to get so you're at the pro tour, you're at the pro circuit level now. Is the plan to push that to that top ten level and 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 graduate, if you will, to the uh, to the Bass Pro Tour? Yes, sir. That's my goal for this year. Now, um, I'm not off to the start that I wanted on the pro circuit, but I'm by no means off to a bad start, being 46th in points. I've just 46 is not a bad place to be after two events. There's plenty of time to catch up, and and there's uh those are big fields and big point events, and they can it can change pretty drastically. Yes, sir. Absolutely. And I, I feel like I've kind of survived the two that really could be an issue for a guy that only gets two days of practice on a new body of water with Okeechobee and Lewis Smith. So uh, from here on out, you know, I, I land a couple top tens and I can jump back up there. But absolutely, my goal is to to qualify for the Bass Pro Tour and and continue to move. Well, you are you are you're certainly one of the one of the up and coming names. I mean, uh, I, I hear your name in circles, and I see your name in 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 results. I almost said box scores, but they don't, really aren't box scores. <laughs> but I but I see you know I see your name in in mentioned in you know in these places because you're doing because you're doing well. And of course, when you rise to the top of the Bass Two Anglers podcast um, Angler of the Year race, that catches my attention as well. So yes, that, that's something. Right now, we don't have anything to give for that. I'm sorry to say, <laughs> maybe hey, in the future we'll have something good for someone that wins it. But uh, right now, we're 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 just getting it off off the ground. But uh, I do know that there's notoriety there, and I do know it's something that you can take to potential sponsors and say, you know, this this speaks volumes. And um, you know, it's it for whatever it's worth. I just like the idea that that I'm such a big fan of the sport myself, and that I just. Uh, want to want to see a way to to uh to recognize those who deserve to be recognized um so what's so what's next for you uh next is the pro circuit event at lake murray that'll that'll be in uh about a couple of weeks i mm -hmm. think it's april 20th or so around there uh wherever that thursday falls murray south carolina i've, I've never fished even in that direction or that side of tennessee but it's uh you know from me doing my research it's a of course, it's it's got that unique bait fish in at the harem. So I'm Blue back. I'm I'm still learning that. Uh, Lewis Smith and and Martin were you know two of them that that I've have seen those in. So, but hopefully that time of year it'll put some largemouth on the bank. I can uh, you know kind of even the playing field for the guys that are that are maybe specialists at chasing the the bluebacks. You know, so maybe I can put a jig in my hand and go fish docks. Well, Jimmy, appreciate you being with us tonight. Um, this this is the record for the latest interview I've ever conducted, though, and and uh, and, and that's that's, and that's for okay. me too. Records are made to be broken, you know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> but, but we sure appreciate you spending some time with us tonight, and uh, and uh, best of luck to you. Uh, you're definitely on our radar now, and we'll be we'll be cheering for you all the way. Well, Keith, I really appreciate you having me, and uh, thank you so much. I appreciate what you're doing with the. Uh, the angler of the year race and the the unique uh system that you've designed and and i'm gonna give it my all to try to uh, catch dakota my buddy and there you and go i can't be at be at the top of the list at the end of the season that guy fishes a lot of events he, he does fishes a lot of events if uh you know he i think he missed his call and he should have been in the circus because he, he's <laughs> always on the road i mean but uh man a really a great fisherman and and dakota and i are both on the hammer rods team and I think yeah. a lot of him, but I still want to beat him. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now you guys are you guys are both uh, really really good guys, and I, I tell you, doing this podcast, I've I've been able to meet some people that I would have never met before, and this is this is a good example of it. Just good down to earth people that are that are out there uh, chasing chasing fish. Got to love it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, and we will talk to you again very soon. All right. Thank you. Have a good All evening. Right. All right. You too. Taking a look at the Bass Tour Anglers Angler of the Year race, uh, Dakota Iber still continues to lead with 400 points. He fished an event this last week. He fished Dale Hollow. Uh, by his standards, didn't do very well. He, he finished he finished 70th.
But, uh, you know, even finishing 70th in an event like that scores you some points. So he now has a total of 400 points. He's increased his lead to up to, he has a 140-point lead in the Bass to Anglers podcast, uh, Angler of the Year standings. Moving into second is Jimmy Washam. Jimmy Washam has fished four events this, this season. He has 260 points. Ryan Salzman is third with 242. Dickie Newberry falls this week to fourth place. With 229, uh, Newberry, Newberry didn't fish an event this last week. Uh, Josh Weaver is in fifth with 228 points. Zach Burge, sixth. He has 226 points. Patrick Walters uh, is uh, leading the BASS Elite Series. He is in seventh place with 223 points. Jacob Wall, 209 points. Randy Howell moves into the top ten this week with 208. And Steve Lopez who is also fishing that Major League Fishing Central Division and has had two top ten finishes. He is in currently in 10th place in the Bass Two Anglers Podcast Angler of the Year race with 200 points. Looking ahead to this week's schedule, there is a BASS Elite Series event at the Sabine River in Orange, Texas. Major League Fishing has a Big Five Toyota Series Plains Division event at Grand Lake in Oklahoma. And Major League Fishing... The Bass Pro Tour has its heavy hitters event taking place in Raleigh, North Carolina. A lot of stuff going on this week. Make sure you get back and check in with us next week because we will have all the information for you. Until next week, keep those live vests zipped and clipped and we will talk to you again very soon.